So we can go ahead and get started. Um, my first session, the session today, as mentioned, will focus on cartilaginous tumors. And I really want to sort of drill down on some of the essentials and focus on some updates that the WHO has made in the, in the recent um, fifth edition, and then outline an approach to cartilaginous tumors, because although they're not among the most common tumors that we probably see overall, among primary bone tumors, they are quite common. So as was, as was already alluded to, we always look at bone tumors in the context of the radiology. And does anyone want to mention a few factors about why we look at the radiology? Any idea? Why is radiology so important? So the radiology can tell us a couple of things, right? And it's basically a barometer of the lesion's biologic potential. The bone is an organ that only has a few ways of responding to stresses, and that's mostly by being bro broken down by osteoclasts or being built up by osteoblasts. And so we can see those patterns of mineralization and see how aggressive a tumor is. Is it an ill-defined border on radiographs, which would mean that the lesion is likely permeative, infiltrative, and malignant? Or is it well-defined and sclerotic? It's growing slowly, and the bone has time to remodel. On the other hand, we can also look at a periosteal reaction for the same uh, regard. Something that's growing quickly, like a high-grade tumor, will have a prominent periosteal reaction, whereas something that's had time to remodel more chronically will have a smooth periosteal border. And so while the radiographs in particular and also sometimes PET and MRI are very helpful today, I really wanted to focus on the histology, but I'll make some comments about the radiology knowing that in real life we'll always be interpreting the histology in the context of the radiographic features and working closely there. Um, finally, you'll notice that this will be a shift from our biomarker session that we just had in the sense that I'm really focusing on the H&E morphology here because while certainly there are some biomarkers that can be useful as well as some molecular methods, much of bone pathology in particular, those of cartilaginous tumors, really still comes down to the H&E. So that's what we'll focus on today. So the first case is that of a seven-year-old male with an L1 spinous process mass. And I'll just bring it up here. At low power, we can see that there's some fibrous tissue, connective tissue around the outside. And then we have a layer that's quite blue and another layer that's, that's really pink. And while we don't have a whole lot of additional tissue in the deep aspect, what I can tell from the low power is that um, this looks like it's transitioning to a mature and normal area of bone, whereas the lesional tissue looks to be in the center. Does anyone have any sort of comments of the type of tissue that really comprises the bulk of this lesion? A couple of different things, right? The surface is a smooth layer of fibrous tissue, and this is really sort of contiguous with the underlying periosteum. Below that is a blue-purple layer representing cartilage with chondrocytes in their lacunae. And then as we go deeper here, this cartilage is getting a pink edge. And so there's a cartilaginous core. And what's happening on the outside of the cartilage? Any term for the, the pink material being deposited at the periphery there? It's endochondral ossification, right? Anytime that bone is deposited on top of cartilage. And in this particular area, this is surrounded by loose fibroconnective tissue and um, has, in a sense, a little bit of a, a structured appearance to it. This is almost reminiscent of the developing bone where you get the primary spongiosa type of material. So that's, that's that area where we have cartilage transitioning to bone. Here's another area where the cartilage cap is somewhat thicker. And at the base, it's also being sealed off by that rim of bone. Deep to that, we see a transition to relatively normal appearing hematopoietic marrow. And further following the lesion down to the inferior most aspect of the slide, we see quite mature and probably really underlying contiguous 
normal cortical bone and medullary cavity. So who can put together these features